The goodness of God leads to repentance, so come, let us worship. Our processional hymn on this, the first Sunday in Lent, is hymn number 105 from the Blue Hymn Book, hymn number 105. Forty days and forty nights Thou wast fasting in the wild Forty days and forty nights Tempted and yet undefiled Sunbeam scorching all the day Chilly dewdrops nightly shed Crawling beast about thy way Stones thy pillow at thy bed. Shall not we thy trial share, And from earthly joys abstain, Fasting with unceasing prayer, Strong with thee to suffer pain? And if Satan vexing sore, Flesh or spirit should assail, Thou his vanquisher before, Grant we may not faint nor fail. So shall we have peace divine, Holier gladness our shall be, Round us too shall angels shine, Such as minister to thee. Keep, O oh, keep us, Saviour dear, ever constant by thy side, that with thee we may appear at the eternal Easter time. Let us pray together the call of purity. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires go, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The collect, epistle, and gospel for the first Sunday in Lent are found beginning on page 140. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O Lord, who for our sake didst fast forty days and forty nights, give us grace to use such abstinence that our flesh being subdued to the spirit, we may ever obey thy godly motions in righteousness and true holiness, to thy honor and glory, who livest and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all them that are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we worthily lamenting our sins, and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of thee the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> the epistle is written in the sixth chapter of the second letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians, beginning at the first verse. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also, that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. For he said, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation, giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. 
but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God, in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying, and behold we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. Here ends the epistle. The Gradual Psalm is Psalm 98, verses 8 to 10, found on page 456. Page 456, Psalm 98, verses 8 to 10. Let us say this together. Let the sea make a noise, and all that is therein, the round world that they that dwell therein. Let the floods clap their hands, and let the hills be joyful together before the Lord, for he has come to judge the earth. With righteousness shall he judge the world, and the peoples with equity. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is written in the fourth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the first verse. Glory, Glory be, be to thee, thee O Lord. Lord. Then was Jesus led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on the pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, if thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of and saith unto him, If all, all these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt not worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. The Gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, light very God of very God, begotten, God, not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost as the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under conscious body. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead. In the light of the world to come. Amen.
from this week's epistle, from the second letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. I don't know if you've ever watched the movie or you've ever seen the stage musical West Side Story. I hear that Steven Spielberg is scheduled to release a remake of the 1961 movie later this year. If you've ever seen it, I suspect that you likely knew instantly that you were watching a retelling of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Two teenage gangs control for, struggle for control of their turf in New York City. The, gang, the Jets are a gang of white kids led by Biff, and the Sharks are Puerto Ricans led by Bernardo. <clears throat> they brawl, the brawl is broken up by the police, and the Jets challenge the Sharks to a rumble after an upcoming dance. But the plot turns when Tony, one of the founders of the Jets, and Maria, the sister of Bernardo, meet at the dance and fall in love. Two star-crossed lovers drawn to each other by deep love, by pulled apart by the animosity of family and friends. And as is the case in its much more famous inspiration, reconciliation in West Side Story only comes after death. Tragedy and romance held together in a moving tension and some really great music by Leonard Bernstein. It is, as I said, a very clear retelling of an older story, a newer story borrowing images from another. But that, of course, is no crime. Great artists do it all the time. Shakespeare himself borrowed significant elements of his story from the tale of Pyramus and Thisbe from Ovid's Metamorphoses, written nearly 1,600 years before. Some might call it plagiarism. Others might call it inspiration. Folks these days like to call it an homage. But regardless of what you call it, it happens all the time in art. For example, is the 1994 movie The Lion King, an animated retelling of the play Hamlet. And it doesn't just happen in movies. Novels do much the same thing over and over again. In fact, it's been argued that there are only so many stories and that all stories are in some way a retelling of previous iterations. And one writer has argued that there are only seven basic plots, seven basic stories, overcoming the monster, rags to riches, the quest, voyage and return, comedy, tragedy, and rebirth. And that while there is much that might be said for or against this theory, I want you to look at the story at the center of this week's gospel as a kind of retelling of the human story, a retelling so profound in fact, that it actually rewrites our story. Jesus goes out into the wilderness to do battle with Satan, to pick up that battle that started at the beginning of time in a garden, the Garden of Eden, where humanity failed so abysmally, where humanity turned away from the will of God to follow instead the will of their own hearts, that lesser God that we all follow at one time or another, with all of the sorrow and tragedy that follow inevitably in the wake. That's the battle that Jesus takes up in the wilderness at the very beginning of his ministry. And it's the battle that he will continue to fight every day of his life, every day of his ministry, until he comes to his own garden, the Garden of Gethsemane, where he will again do battle with Satan, where, unlike those who have gone before, he will make the painful choice to accept the will of the Father rather than his own will. So in the end, Jesus doesn't just retell our tragic story that story of disobedience and rebellion and sin, he actually rewrites it. He gives it the ending that it should have had from the beginning. And in the process, he, reads, he rewrites our own personal stories, not just the larger story of humanity, but all the individual stories that make up our lives. No matter who we are, we all have a history. And if we are truly honest with ourselves, we all have those moments that were it, po were it possible, we would rewrite. Those moments when we said something or did something or thought something that failed to reflect the God love that lies at the heart of our story. Those moments when we marred the triune image, the threefold image in which we were made. Those moments of regret or failure or disappointment. But rewriting our stories, rewriting those stories, lies beyond our power. 
as much as we might wish, sometimes painfully so we cannot erase the past. We cannot record over it as we once did with those old cassette recordings. Try as we might, we cannot rewrite our own stories. The past is for us a land that lies beyond our reach, forever frozen in our memory and in our conscience, a land where we can so easily become prisoners held there by ourselves or by others for the rest of our lives. That's the story that Christ comes to rewrite, your story and mine. Not just to retell it, but to actually rewrite it, to give it our story an entirely new ending, to erase forever the record of past failures and disappointments, to erase forever all the accumulated brokenness and rebellion and sorrow and sin and hurt for you and for me and for all of humanity, from the beginning of time to the end of time, from that very first moment to this very moment to moments yet to come. And to do that, he starts with that battle that we must fight every day of our lives, the battle to do the will of God the battle to trust God's plan for our lives and to live into that plan, to live into the image in which we were created. Jesus shows us the risk of trying to take matters into our own hands, to follow our own paths, the risk of assuming that we are always going to be the very best judges of what is right and holy and good. He shows us that as tempting and as reasonable as the easier path of self-glory may seem, as much as it may appear to be nothing more than good common sense. The choice of our own will over God's will will, as it always has, end in tragedy. So these days of Lent are for us days to listen for the will of God, to listen quietly, to put in whatever wilderness we can put ourselves into for this journey to the cross, to listen quietly for the will of God and to commit ourselves to trust that will, to trust God's will always, regardless of where God's will will take us. Now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost be ascribed all might, majesty, honor, glory, dominion, and power, this day and forevermore. Amen. I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. All that is in the heaven and the earth is thine. All things come of thee, and of thine home. We offer this holy Eucharist to the praise and glory of Almighty God, and in prayer that we might walk with Christ more closely in this our Lenten journey, that we might use the gift of these 40 days to find the, the peace and the joy which come only through him, that in acts of self-examination and prayer, sacrifice, and self-giving, we might be freed from all those things that cloud our vision and weigh us down, that in times of trial and need, we might look to Christ to give us hope. Let us pray this day for all of God's people, praying, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. As our Lord Jesus Christ called his disciples to take up their cross and follow him, we pray that he might give to his church the same boldness to follow him, not counting the cost, that we might have the same faith and trust to answer that call and confidently proclaim his kingdom of righteousness and truth. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. As our Lord Jesus Christ was tempted by the forces of evil, yet turned from power and ease, and chose the path of sacrifice and love, we pray that he might teach us how to recognize the approach of evil in all of its forms, and be on our guard against it, knowing that his support and love are always close at hand. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray that he might help each of us not to compromise virtue for comfort, that during this time of Lent he might help us to see more clearly the ways in which we follow him, that as we re-examine our lives through self-discipline and prayer, we might enter into his presence. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray that all Christians might radiate the love of God in Christ so that their lives might become a light of hope to others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray that during this time of Lent, we might listen to the will of Christ in the reading of the Holy Scriptures and respond to his will. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who hold positions of authority, that they not use their power to the detriment of those they are called to serve. We pray for all the world's leaders and for our own leaders, that they might be given insight and integrity to govern wisely according to God's will. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray this day for all who are diseased in body and mind, for all the sick, especially Dorothy, Brian, Lee, Ruth, Lloyd, Donna, John, Karen, Lyman, Linda, Wanda, Pam, Amy, Cynthia, Eva, Gail, Edmund, Mary, Esther, Simone, Maureen, Derwin, Wilma, Griffin, Dale, Tom, Christopher, Eleanor, Kelly, Kevin, Rael, Marie, Pius, Cedric, Jerry, Scott, Sarah, Ben, Michael, Pat, Philip, Terry, Aiden, Lisa, Greg, Brenda, Wayne, Alan, Charles, Adam, Eric, Martin, Paige, Shane, Rochelle, Sherry, Randy, Melanie, Matt, Sheila, Paul, Gerald, Franklin, Suvro, Shelley, Joey, John, Jennifer, Doug, Lori, Muriel, Doris, Gary, Pearl, and Walter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are lonely, fearful, or sorrowing, for the hungry and homeless, for those who face temptation, doubt, and despair, for all those who suffer from natural disaster, for prisoners and those suffering the enslavement of addiction, and for all those who are in need of God's grace in other ways as they are remembering Chelsea, Judy, Aaron, Courtney, Vanda, Wendy, Martha, Bobby Joe, Georgia, Joseph, Carol, David, Shauna, Ethel, Evelyn, Sam, Mabel, Shirley, Kay, Charlie, Maria, Sandra, Sheridan, Ralph, Gerard, Carissa, Deanna, Kenny, Heather, Sean, Brenda, Lois, Dwayne, Madison, Shannon, and Paul. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let us remember all the faithful departed, especially Ruby Pugh, Catherine Curtis, Quintez Downey, Stephen Dwayne Hovey, Joyce Woodcock, Malcolm Wall, Cleveland Hovey, Constance Dorothy McCready's, Marion Nason, Clara Liu, Bill Russell, Lois Sandwich, Marg Curry, Marguerite McAlpine, Kenny O'Donnell, and John Pay. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. And let life perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom be the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, sin. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance 
and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. <clears throat> Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that labor and are heavy laden. And I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. To the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all to you see, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said, If any one sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is a propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. <clears throat> Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right yes. so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, Creator and Preserver of all things. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee, and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy has given thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who make thereby this one oblation of himself, once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Here are some merciful Father, <clears throat> we must humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receive these like creatures of bread and wine. According to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution, <clears throat> in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he prayed, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sin. Do this as often as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we thy humble servants of all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee, in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life, and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly Mercy to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant, that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain the remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benefit through Jesus Christ. Our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs of thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so weep the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed with his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sin of the world. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. In the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for you, preserve the body and soul of the everlasting. Let it take a gift for us that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith in the Holy Spirit. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is shed for you, preserve your body and soul of your everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and for all of your Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual for the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bound and dubious service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. 
our recessional hymn from the Blue Hymn Book, hymn number 589. Number 589. Take up thy cross, the Savior said, if thou wouldst my disciple be. Deny thyself, thou wilt forsake, and humbly follow after me. Take up thy cross, let not its weight fill thy weak spirit with alarm. His strength shall bear thy spirit up, and brace thy heart and nerve thine own. Take up thy cross, nor heed the shame, nor let thy foolish pride rebel. Thy Lord for thee the cross endured to save thy soul from death and hell. Take up thy cross, then in his strength, and calmly every danger pray. Twill guide thee to a better home, and lead to victory o'er the grave. Take up thy cross, and follow Christ, nor think till death to lay it down. For only he who bears the cross may hope to wear the glorious crown. To the great Lord, the one in three, all praise forevermore ascend. O oh, grant us in our home to see the heavenly life that knows no end. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us go forth in peace. In, in the, the name, name of the Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen.